Welcome back to the Ango Podcast. May the 4th be with you. It is May the 4th, so you'll be hearing this actually the following day on Tuesday, but we're just getting in the spirit of things. Today we got our top 10 based on best original movie scores and go. Well, I mean, I'd be remiss. Here we are wearing these festive hats, talking right. about movie scores. Drinking my blue milk. Drinking that blue milk. Alcoholic blue milk. It's actually a cocktail. Star Wars. Uh, but specifically, yeah. I'm going to go with kind of a... All right, so I know that for those of you who have listened to a lot of our uh, podcasts, you know that we normally combine franchises or creators... We combine a lot of Bethesda stuff because we're Bethesda fanboys and like the, the, the entire list would be Bethesda. But for this one, not only is John Williams, I think, a separate entity uh, in and of himself, right? So you gotta, we'll have multiple John Williams things on here, I'm sure. But also, I think we should split up Star Wars because I'm going to go with The Phantom Menace. Oh, <coughs> so you're talking about different Star Wars films. Different Star Wars films. Wow, okay. Interesting. I'm going I'm to go with... Unless uh, we, we have literally not talked about this yet, so I'm up for if you want to combine them all, I'm fine with that. I mean, why don't we why don't we do this? Let's keep them separate and see what happens on the list. If we get enough that we're like, well, Star Wars is taking up too many you know notches or whatever, then then we'll combine them. Fair enough. Yeah, we could even there's a case to be made for original trilogy versus prequels versus sequel there you trilogy. Go. There's that too. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I, the OG Star Wars, you know, if, if you're going to separate them out. And I got Phantom Menace because, on the list, and I got A New Hope. Yeah, I think George Lucas came out of his pocket like $25,000 to get John Williams to score it, because no one wanted to give them any money, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Honestly, of all nine movies, or 11 movies, or whatever there is now total, um, those are the standouts to me. And OG Star Wars, I mean, and we're, then we're the, talking about John Williams. John Williams. I think <laughs> I'm looking up some stuff, and Jaws, the theme song for Jaws, was done yeah, by John Williams. Go. I'm trying to think of some non-Star Wars, and that's definitely Jurassic Park, man. I mean, to yep. be honest, we really could just do all John Williams on this list. Well, yeah, I, I have a also a. Pick, There's a few others. Yeah, go ahead. Halloween theme song. Who did that's John Williams who did that? No, that's John Carpenter. Uh, but he did the the music. Written and produced by John Carpenter. Doom, doom. Really simple but catchy thing. Ominous. Yeah. Soup's um, ominous. Uh, I mean, I again, we're like fucking three minutes into recording. I don't want to like blow our wad here. Can we just talk <laughs> about Jurassic Park a little more before we get to Jaws? Oh. Excellent score. I mean, like I said, John Williams could make up the whole list on his own easily. I mean, you got, you know, Hook and Harry Potter. I mean, how recognizable is the Harry Potter theme? Yeah, you're not wrong, actually. I, um, I'm not a big Harry Potter fan, to be honest, books and or movies. And, uh, that boop, 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 boop gets stuck in my yeah. head yeah. once yeah. every four months or something did a great job at, at lending sort of like a, I don't know, wonder, lack of a better word, like a whimsy to Harry Potter with, with just the music. Yeah, man. Don't be afraid to use the word whimsy. It's a fantastic word. Uh, Danny Elfman. <laughs> yeah. uh, but what? I mean, it's like all... Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice. It's all fucking uh, Batman 89. It's all Tim Burton stuff. It is, for the most part. I didn't realize that he was in Oingo Boingo. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Bup, bup, ba -doop, boop. Scrooged was pretty good. Uh, didn't like Darkman. Hey, Darkman was a classic, okay? I don't know about the music. It's not very memorable, but... Men in Black. Yeah. Men in Black, he did? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Nice. Uh, so what do we want to put on there uh, for old Danny Elfman? Beetlejuice, I agree with. Because I do remember 
the song. And that one had like a couple pop culture songs thrown in there. To clarify for the listeners, we're doing scores versus not soundtracks. We're not doing compiled right. lists of existing songs. We're doing brand new scores for four movies. I feel like I can think of a third composer, but the name's not coming to me now. I mean, was it um, Alan Silversteery, or so, however you say his name? It's Back to the Future, Forrest Gump, a lot of stuff in the in the eighties and nineties. A lot of stuff with most of Tom Hanks movies. Interesting. Okay. Um, I, I would put Back to the Future on the list. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I'm thinking uh, 2001, a uh, sure thing, Beavis. 2001, a space odyssey. Uh, <laughs> uh, that the soundtrack for that was pretty good. I think that was one of Kubrick's. Yeah, I know Kubrick. I always have trouble with names. This one is no exception. I like it. I mean, Doctor uh, Strange Love wasn't quite as memorable sound wise, but no. definitely 2001 had a very atmospheric. Uh, Blade Runner had a good score. Very atmospheric, kind of in the same vein as 2001. Hans Zimmer. Hans uh, Zimmer, yeah. For Interstellar, I will also like to put Interstellar on the list. Again, uh, of course you would, Mike. Of course you will. A good score builds tension, right? It builds anxiety. Um, yes. Overrated movie. He did uh, also Gladiator or something, right? It's one of those. Hans Zimmer? That sounds right. That's good. Let me look it up. I'm sorry, Brian. You had 2001 A Space Odyssey, and I think you had one more, right, in that same? Yeah, no, did I didn't. Bill had more. Or Wait, Bill? What? Say what? After happened? Interstellar or uh, 2001. Oh, Blade Runner is what I said. My bad. <laughs> Old man forgetting <laughs> who said what. Even yeah. if it was I don't know what's going on. What about like I'm trying to think like E. T. I mean we can put it on the list. I, I don't really have many specific memories about the soundtrack to be honest. Or the score. Okay. Or who wrote one for uh Close Encounters? Close Encounters. Again, very atmospheric. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be okay with uh, putting that on the list, at the very least for deliberation. Was that also John Williams? I don't know. That's what I was saying. I've got to look that up. Uh, I did not put a hook in the list, but I can. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those kids' movies that he did really well with. Home Alone, Hook. Yeah, I think Home Alone actually had a more compelling than Hook, sorry to say. I'd agree with that. A more compelling uh, fucking score to it. I wouldn't have thought about it except for you bringing it up. I mean, that was just scored so beautifully, so seamlessly. You don't think about it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, Close Encounters was John Williams. I'm trying to, Since I'm the more horror buff, I'm trying to think of any more horrors. I almost think The Thing... I don't think The Thing qualifies. It had a good sound... Tr- I mean, a good score set to it, but nothing pops out. Like... Uh, Halloween or 2001. And Jaws, of course. I'm just going to go with uh, the Avengers in general, but I guess Endgame. Again, super iconic theme song. Lord Uh, of the Rings. Oh, who did Lord of the Rings? Is that Danny Elfman? I think that may be Danny Elfman. I don't know. I have to look that one up. I feel like I should know that, but I don't. Howard Shore, apparently. Okay. I mean, that was fantastic, in my opinion. I got Lord of the Rings. I got Avengers. I'm just going to group those two up. Because it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. I won't put it on the list, but shout out to the Wonder Woman theme song. Because that shit rocked pretty hard. I'm going to skirt through the list here while we all think about what else could be included. I got Phantom Menace, A New Hope, Jaws, Halloween, Jurassic Park, Beetlejuice, Back to the Future, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, Interstellar, E.T., Close Encounters, Home Alone, Lord of the Rings, Avengers, 
Uh, what makes a good score? Um, captures the... I mean, it's hard to, to, to really project emotion in a movie, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a good score will capture whatever the director is going for emotionally in that scene and... Uh, and highlight it. What's not not many not any comedies on here unless you want to count Beetlejuice. Oh, huh. trying to think of a. Did you good put Home Alone on there? Home Alone's on there. <laughs> not okay. really a comedy though. Almost a drama. No, I, it was a light-hearted comedy. But <laughs> this eight-year-old might die. <laughs> I feel like this... most comedies go for more of a soundtrack, like a modern soundtrack, is why. Yeah, they're going like, to be on soundtracks, like yeah. sh- shit, a lot of uh, Cusack films are going to be on the soundtrack, at least debate it on that discussion. High Fidelity, yeah. 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 Which I can honestly end up leaving spoilers for next week's top ten. I could leave High Fidelity off of my top ten list for... Well, he had a lot. Point blank... Uh, Gross Point Blank, that had a good soundtrack. But I'm jumping ahead, jumping the gun again. Ooh, what about Indiana Jones? Another Indiana John Jones! Another John Williams, yeah. but still, man, Indiana <laughs> Jones. I feel like you got to put those on there. John, number one, yes. John Williams. Just put him at everything, and we'll have yeah. the rest for other things. <laughs> yeah, John Williams is like the Bethesda of uh, composers. <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty hard to beat, man. If you really need a... a a score that will almost drive your film in in the you know the the tone of it. He's kind of your guy. Yeah, I liked the Ice Harvest. I might be an old man who hasn't had his oatmeal yet, but I feel in one of the Batman's had a really good soundtrack. I can't remember which. I couldn't point out which one. Batman eighty nine. I, I would be fine with putting on the list because that same. Main the main track that Danny Elfman wrote ended up being the theme song for Batman the Animated Series. Did he do the first one? Did he do yeah. Oh. Hmm. Pretty sure anyway. Fact check me. I'm gonna put it on the list regardless, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, a lot of fact checking this episode, folks. So a lot of editing involved, I'm sure. I mean, honestly, three hours ago, if you asked me to name three composers at the top of my head, or five, I could only name three. Like in a pinch. Well, this podcast Con- is supposed to be a venture, a span one's mind, and yada, yada, yada. Espanol one's mind? I think Hans Zimmer ended up doing a Batman movie, though. I don't know which one. Uh, I don't remember there being any... I don't remember the the... Chris Nolan Dark Knight trilogy being memorable soundtrack wise. Requiem for a Dream or Donnie Darko. Those definitely had both of those had passable soundtracks. Um, I hated Donnie Darko. Well, I didn't hate it, but I didn't see what it was. But But yeah, for Requiem for a Dream. Said? Yeah, I was not a fan. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't a fan either. Everybody's oh, like, it's so great. And I'm like, eh. It's probably the beginning of my hate for Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> I forgot you hated Jake Gyllenhaal on. I forgot he was in that movie. I put Rec Room for a Dream on there, but I think... Well, no, what I'm saying is that uh, the quartet, the something-something quartet that, the, that that did the main the main song, that was already a song. So that's more of a soundtrack, I think, than a score... Um, I put the Sting on there. Do you guys know the Sting? Mm-mm. Uh, okay. yeah. Song written for the movie. Was it really? Yeah. Hmm. That's a pretty good starting point, I think. Uh, Phantom Menace, A New Hope, Jaws, Halloween, Jurassic Park, Beetlejuice, Back to the Future, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, Interstellar, E.T., Close Encounters, Home Alone, Lord of the Rings, Avengers, Indiana Jones, Batman 89, The Sting, Requiem for a Dream. Anything I missed? I was thinking The Lost Boys, but no, that's more soundtrack material. I do feel like there isn't enough 90s representation on here. 
Well, the 90s was incredibly derivative of the 80s, in my opinion. Parts of it, yeah. At least was, in, in this area, I'd agree with that. I mean, movies it didn't wasn't... evolve much beyond from the 80s to 90s. The style did, the trends, but you get into I the I guess it's 2000s. interesting. Any early picks for number one? Any hot number ones on this list? I do have one that I might add. Okay. The, the, because the, the score was the only good thing about the film, and it ended up influencing subsequent series and films. And that's Star Trek The Motion Picture. Hmm. I don't think I've ever actually seen the first one. Because the the opening um the opening music to or theme song to the next generation was almost an, an identical copy from like uh a piece that was from the original motion picture. And that kind of influenced all most of the music during that like Rick Berman era era in the 80s through the 90s. Neat. Yeah. I thought about throwing Lawrence of Arabia on here, but... Mm. Yeah. I... There's one song in particular that I have no taste for. I don't understand how it made it in the movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Everyone knows that. But I do kind of take issue with one particular... It just kind of breaks the whole thing for me for a second. Anyway... So I'm going to leave it off, but I might throw it in as an honorable mention. All right. I think we've got a list then. Put I think we do. I think if I if I have to throw out a number one, it would be Star Wars. May 4th, you know, baby! You know, yeah, it really would. I think it, not just because it's you know, May the 4th. I think it's... Uh, Are we it lumping them the together, though? Uh, specifically New Hope. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. If you don't mind, I'd like to keep Phantom Menace separate. Yeah, because it, it's in the same vein, but I feel like it's a very different soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably the most original outside of an, of A New Hope. So you think about a lot of it is building upon the music from A New Hope, and Phantom Menace does do some original stuff. Yeah, Duel of the Fates specifically. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you gonna give us a little clip? No, you want to, Mike. <laughs> so none of the new Star Wars is on the list for sound. I've forgotten them. I, I don't remember any of them. I don't even know you've seen them more recently. That's funny. But that shows the iconic, the iconic nature of Star Wars. Absolutely. Now... I feel like typically we end up we, we we put a number one seed and we put a, an early ten seed, but I'm just looking at the list and thinking about what could be number two. I mean, you have some pretty strong contenders here. Yeah. Jaws yeah, then, versus Jurassic the, Park. Did we throw um, Forrest Gump on there? No. That's we a good could, one to yeah. throw on. But I, see, when I think of Forrest Gump, I think more about uh, Fortunate Son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Well, that's why I was saying that might be one that I could, you know, slot in both. But I think that might be an honorable mention, though. Yeah, I'm not going to push for it being number two, but I think Space Odyssey, 2001, a Space Odyssey, definitely. And the same guy, I forget his name, did Spartacus. I... I think Lord of the Rings, to me, it's between that and... I mean, I hate to put John Williams like one, one two, three, but you really could. Um, I don't know. Indiana Jones or Jurassic Park, I think, is right up there, too. I feel like those are, for me, kind of right in that, you know, top four or five. You know. I would say Jurassic Park over Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I mean, Indiana I would, Jones, sort of the story, sort of. I think the story actually complements the soundtrack, so the sta- soundtrack doesn't stand out as much. It was really good, from my recollect old man recollection, but I think we're going for more dynamic uh, scores. So I think... Yeah. Jurassic Park would be a good second spot. 
Yeah, I think so too. I would take Jurassic Park over Lord of the Rings, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even beyond the main theme, I feel like it was very good mm-hmm. throughout the movie. And even if you want to push it back, I'm going to go for 2001 A Space Odyssey for number three. I would put that at like number four. I would do, personally, I would do Jurassic Park, Jaws, and okay. then... yeah. So we will Jaws was pretty William good of one, a soundtrack, two, and they made... <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is why I want Space Odyssey as number three, just so it beats out Jaws. And I think it actually, in all rights, has a slightly better than Jaws. Bill, I I'll let you... That. Jaws or Space Odyssey, 2001. I mean, I agree with what you're saying, not having John Williams one, two, three. That's why I threw Lord of the Rings out. But man, Jaws is just so memorable. Yeah. And adds so much like intensity to those scenes. It's almost if you take away that soundtrack, is Jaws at all even a horror movie or scary? I mean, no. They're just guys fishing if you don't have that suspense. Yeah, okay, I'll concede of that spot to Jaws. I brought it up, so Yeah, yeah. And again, I think you're right. That's one of the best horror film, I guess or if you want to put it in that genre, like... Suspense. Yeah. Definitely high suspense. See, there's uh, so much similarity with 2001. That's why... I'm also more of a sci-fi geek, so that's probably why I'm pushing for the Space Odyssey horror being higher than it really deserves to be. My own personal bias. Just to wax a little more on Jaws, no homo. Uh... <clears throat> it had this nuance to it where you got little bits of the main theme throughout the movie until it all culminates. Mm-hmm. Really, really well done. Um, so I got Jaws. I got 2001 Space Odyssey at number four. Number four, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do we like better? Uh, Lord yeah. of the Rings or Indiana Jones? I would have to go with Lord of the Rings over Indiana yeah. Jones. There, I mean, either one could go in that spot, really, to be fair. I mean, which but Indiana yeah. Jones and which Lord of the Rings? I mean, I it's hard to separate those two trilogies. I mean, I'm in not my opinion, they're all, all very interchangeable. Were, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, just just like, sorry. I think uh, Lord of the Rings, just because that Indiana Jones had that one not epic one and the music actually was ref- what was it the temple of doom it was whichever one the kid was in mm. i mean it was still a good score but the temples the the sacrifice scene was bad all around mm-hmm. i mean the movie was just weak compared to the other two so we got lord of the rings at five do we just put indy at six then sure Sure. So seven, eight, nine, and ten left. Uh, looking through the list, we I'm still got Halloween. Push for ten at Halloween at ten. I don't think it deserves a higher spot than ten, but I honest, think it. John Carpenter I'm, should be represented. It. I just can't. I can't place the, the music. If I'm really being honest, that's kind of. Yeah, the, that's I'm question. not a horror fan. I th- I seen it at some point i just i don't know that i could tell you what the what the music sounds uh, like oh, okay okay yeah yeah okay now it's i mean okay. yeah i mean friday the 13th also had a good soundtrack overall but halloween beat it out nightmare okay. on elm street was just that was probably more soundtracky and that doesn't deserve a place that was just the sound of Nightmare on Elm Street was just meant to be disturbing. Not subtle might, like in Friday the 13th and Halloween. I might boot Requiem and E.T. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. E.T. can come off there. Uh, I'm going to relegate the sting to honorable mention. Okay. Okay. Uh... I feel like Batman 89 should be number nine. Okay. 
personally. How many spots do we have left? We have uh, seven, eight, and nine left. Still on the list, we have Phantom Menace, Beetlejuice, Back to the Future, Blade Runner, Interstellar, Close Encounters, Home Alone, which uh, yeah. has its merits. I'm thinking Avengers Home Alone. and Batman 89. Home Alone at number nine. I don't think Home Alone is better than any of the other ones. No, that we could I, potentially. I would take Home Alone over Avengers, but I don't see Avengers yeah. making the list, honestly, at this point. Yeah, that was a I, I think uh, Back pick. to the Future. Okay. At number nine, at least. Maybe yeah, higher, I, think, I don't know. But, I think I would take Home Alone over Back to the Future, but I... Yeah. Now, keep in mind, Back to the Future, the main song was Huey Lewis in the News, right? I mean that was in there, but they had they had a pretty good you know score that that handled most of the action scenes. And that song was written specifically, so that's kind of a weird it gray is. area. Yeah, it was written it specifically is. for the movie. Yeah, I think Home Alone has slightly better score. And again, soundtrack spoiler, overall, it may make both lists for next week because I think I I would bring that one up for soundtrack as well. I'd have to listen to it. I might listen Johnny to it now. Johnny Be Good, you know, and Huey Lewis in the News does, does a couple of originals for it. It's actually a really solid soundtrack. What about if we put Fallout on the soundtrack? <laughs> <laughs> Bethesda <laughs> Love? Hey, it's Three Dog. I'm playing all your jams. Fucking, I don't want to set the world on fire. Uh, well, some of the songs <laughs> for the new one, 76, go play it now. No, I'm not plugging it. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> they did, did you get know an additional song. That John Williams song, uh, West Virginia, or John Denver, not John Williams, <laughs> was originally written about Maryland. You can Google it. Because okay. John Denver was from Maryland. Hmm. So it's about Frederick, actually. Mm, cool. um, Makes sense. A very similar vibe to West Virginia. Yeah. Uh, Batman 89? All right, so run through the list again, what we have left. All right, so... Honorable mention. Phantom Menace, Beetlejuice, Blade Runner, Interstellar, Close Encounters. Did we set up put Home Alone on the list or no? I don't think we officially did. I don't know. Yeah, I want it on because I think out of all these, it's a good soundtrack overall. Then do we Bat- slot Phantom Menace 89? in there? Or? Well, so here's on the list we have 10 Halloween, 9 Back to the Future, 7 and 8 Blank, Indiana Jones at 6, Lord of the Rings at 5, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Jaws, Jurassic Park, and New Hope. So does do you want Phantom Menace on the list at like 7 or 8? I think it should be honorable mention. We already have a Star Wars, and only because we already have a Star Wars will I entertain that idea. Okay. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. We've only got I'm two slots left. So how do you feel? I'm only pushing for Home Alone. I'm at the rat. I think Blade Runner also is a good contender. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, if Blade I would... Runner sticks out to me, you know what I mean? No, I wouldn't I put Blade Runner on the, on the top ten, ultimately, to be honest. I mean, it's good. Again, it, it was very atmospheric and helped build the tone of the movie, but not a standout. <clears throat> uh, Beetlejuice, I just don't remember any Beetlejuice songs yeah, other than... it was good. It had a good soundtrack, but overall, no. Close Encounters, I would kind of put in the same camp as Blade Runner, but not as iconic to me, personally. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. Blade Runner, I think, uh, beats Third Encounters. Interstellar, I guess I would put in that camp, but like at the top of its class in that camp. Because, again, it helped build the atmosphere. It was great at building tension. I mean, parts of the movie have made me cry in, in certain viewings, and the music is no played no small part in that. But I'll, I'll bump it. Uh, because I at Star Trek, emotion, the motion picture... Like I said, just because of its significance, we can put that as an honorable mention. Yeah, though. I think it's a better. It was just literally the only good thing about that film, <laughs> and everyone knows it. Uh, and I guess I would put Home Alone before Batman '89 when it comes to the seven and eight spots. Okay. Thoughts. So we're putting Batman and. Home Alone in 7 and 8. 
Yeah, we're seven. yeah. Uh, Home Alone at seven, Batman at eight. Okay. Batman better than Back to the Future? I kind of uh, agree with that. Yeah, it's right in there. There, the, you know, I was gonna say you can make an argument to put Back to the Future above it, but either way, what do you think, Brian? Uh, I'm split between the two. I really am. I'm the one who brought up the Batman. I couldn't remember which one had the best soundtrack. If I remember, I'm thinking Back to the Future should be honorable mention because it's definitely going to take it for soundtrack. Well, definitely Back to the Future's gonna... on the list. The it's question on the list was at nine. Which one yeah. should be eight or nine? It's still hard. Sorry, I, I've sort of. I'm going to leave it like leave that. It the way it is. Yeah, I'd rather, honestly, if it came down to me, I would put Batman before Back to the Future. A lot of honorable mentions, but I think... I'm going to take Lawrence off of honorable mentions. I'll leave Forrest. I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take Blade Runner off of honorable mentions just because I don't want a billion fucking honorable mentions. And I'm going to leave Interstellar. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. yeah. What else do we Brian's have Brian's making faces. Uh, the Sting I left on because I feel like it's iconic. Uh, Star Trek, Forrest Gump, Phantom Menace, Interstellar are the honorable mentions that I missed. I anything? think Forrest Gump should be taken off just because we have so many honorable know. mentions. I don't know. Yeah, we can just have a ton a... of honorable mentions this time. Okay. I mean, if you if you listen to the movie score, it's it's actually pretty good. So I don't know. Also, Hans Zimmer, I believe. Uh, yeah, or uh, Alan Silvestri. I don't know. Remember which mm. one? Your mama should just care about your education, boy. <laughs> oh man, I had a I spelled motion wrong for Star Trek the motion picture. And so the BBM Productions definitive list of top ten movie scores is number ten, Halloween. Jamie Lee Curtis will never kill her brother. Number nine, Back to the Future. Like Doc, I need a Rube Goldberg machine to make me breakfast. Number eight, Batman eighty nine. I can't turn my neck. Number seven, Home Alone. This little boy's a fucking straight-up murderer, guys. Number six, Indiana Jones. The dog was named Indiana. Number five, Lord of the Rings. You have my bow and my axe and my sword. Frodo just walks out holding a bunch of weapons. Number four, 2001, A Space Odyssey. I can't rate you any higher, Hal. Uh, wait, how was the robot, right? <laughs> yeah. Fuck, I fucked that up. <laughs> Number three, Jaws. You know, I haven't felt comfortable pooping after seeing Jaws. Number two, Jurassic Park. Uh, Bill's dogs actually love that song, especially when you sing it and come at them like velociraptors. Little known fact. We got a few honorable mentions here. Star Trek, the motion picture. To quote Bill, it's the only good thing about that movie. Uh... The Sting. You've probably heard it if you've ever heard an ice cream truck. Forrest Gump. A uh, good blend of uh, of score and uh, original score and uh, and soundtrack work. We'll probably hear it again on the next podcast. Uh, Phantom Menace. Uh, Interstellar. Murph and the greatest score of all time. Star Wars: A New Hope. Uh, I was supposed to go to Tashi Station. Blue milk. <laughs> Blue Milk, sponsored by Blue Milk. <laughs> Brian, feel free to cut as much of that as you want. Um, <laughs> also, fun fact, do you know the genre of music that the Cantina Band played? It's literally called, canonically, jizz. <laughs> Hot jizz music, I swear to God. There's a book oh, called great. Stories from the Cantina, and they're known as a, a jizz I gave you that book. Or whatever I, they yeah, were. yeah. I, I totally forgot about that. So good. Yeah. Anyway, we had we had fun today, guys. 
Bring uh, back the Chibi Yub Nub song. <laughs> of course, that's Jedi, but just had to throw that out there. It counts. Oh, uh, this is fun. If you go back and watch the end credits from Return of the Jedi, Lando is like clapping along with the music. Yeah. And he's way off beat. Like, it's not even close. If you, like, clap as he claps, he's just, it's just not, they must not have been playing the song. It's I've actually kind of funny. Colt 45. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Billy D is hammered on set. Uh, anyway, happy May the 4th, guys. I mean, it's May the 5th, uh, as you're listening to this, but we recorded it just yesterday on May the 4th. Uh, we have some awesome headgear on, which I hope Brian shows you a little bit of. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and tell us how much your favorite movie score was left off the list and how much you hate us. Uh, tune in on Friday when our podcast topic will be, I don't know, uh, (laughs) but it'll be there. So check it out. Uh, until next time, uh, it's been BBM Industries, Brian, Bill, and Mike. May the fourth be with you. (laughs) May the fourth be with you. Yeah, there you go.